Hey, what's going on, guys? Dope Swarner here, and I am recording this second time. This is cut two. Um, I recorded like probably five or six minutes of this video and then realized I didn't flip the on switch on the microphone. So, definitely not the first time I've done that. It won't be the last. But, um, anyways, I um, basically wanted to say sorry, I haven't made a video in the last, I don't know, it's probably been about a week now. Um, it was doing so good for so long, and then. Um, I've got a lot of ideas, which is at least a good thing. It's just putting those ideas into action and actually getting them done that's been the problem. So, um, some stuff though I definitely think you guys will be excited for. I've gotten some comments from you guys um, with suggestions or things you kind of wanted to see. And I might not have responded to those comments per se, but I definitely took them into consideration. And I have a couple of videos coming up that are based off of things that you guys considered. So hopefully you guys will be excited for that. Uh, basically, I've got a couple more videos with the RP9V2, which will be coming up over the following... Uh, I'd say a week to maybe two weeks um, of doing some videos kind of more targeted at this and then it'll be come probably one of the printers on my shelf that I'll just use for various time lapses and builds and stuff like that. But uh, in this video, I figured I would talk to you guys about future plans I have for this um, upgrade wise and things like that. And some of these things I will be doing very soon um, as some of them are be as soon as like by the time you see the next video on this while other ones... Um, we'll take time and they're not a rush, so we will see um, We'll see how it goes in no particular order per se But um, for one if you can see right here on the actual hotbed there is like four wooden risers or washers um, Between the actual like build bed plate and like the mounting bracket um, right here and as of right now if you're going to adjust kind of the leveling, you can't actually adjust the bed leveling. You just adjust the Z um, Z axis height, basically. You've got a left and a right stepper motor, so you can adjust it, you know, kind of from a left to right or right to left angle, which has worked relatively well. Um, it took a while to kind of get it dialed in to where I was able to get the prints to stick well, but I've gotten it to now where it does stick. However, I would like the ability to adjust the four corners independently, and so what I plan on doing to that is um, removing the wooden washers, adding springs in place, and potentially adding a little bit more length to these screws. I have to see if I can actually do that because um, I've got to be able to clear these wooden pieces right here. So I might not be able to go um, much longer with the screws, but I definitely will be um, replacing the wooden washers with springs and then there's like just nuts down below here and I'll probably replace those or design and 3D print some kind of a knob that'll make it easier to loosen and tighten the nuts on the bottom because it's not so easy with your with your fingers right now. So that's one of the things that I will be doing sooner versus later. Next, one thing I would like to do potentially down the line here is add a heated bed to this 3D printer. Um, definitely not something that's a priority of mine. The DaVinci does have a heated bed and the Fulgertech i3 2020 does have a heated bed. Um, I contacted Bob and asked him if this machine, because I wasn't sure if maybe the wood, there was some issue with having a heated bed. He said no, um, you could definitely add a heated bed as long as you were to obviously up the power supply because the PSU is not rated at enough watts to be able to support the um, additional juice needed for the heated bed. So basically I'd have to up uh, upgrade the PSU um, and I do have a, an extra ATX power supply that a buddy of mine hooked me up with a long time ago that I've kind of been wanting to use so I could make a video of how to use an ATX power supply with like the ramps board. Um, so that's a possibility of what I might do with that. But again, not a rush by any means at all. One thing that I would like to do um, definitely before doing the hotbed is I'm sure I could find something on Thingiverse that already exists for this uh, extruder, which I believe he said was like the E3D. I want to say it's the V4. Five potentially or jhead v5 or so i i can't remember off the top of my head right now uh, but i know it's a pretty standard uh extruder that is used by a lot of other printers so i would like to um potentially or probably design it myself i think i could probably do it with my limited cad skills i just have to kind of analyze how i want to go about this but similarly to what i put on the uh, Folger Tech, I would like to mount at least one, if not two, cooling fans for the first layer. Um, I definitely noticed that I get better results with the Folger Tech i3 since I added that cooling fan for the first layer, so um, I want to do something with that to basically help uh, um, help with the cooling of the PLA. I think that will definitely increase print quality, um, so that is kind of a big one for me. Also, I, now, I need to talk to Bob about this, who, again, is the engineer 
and designer and owner of Bob CNC the, and was awesome enough to send me this printer. Um, basically, he uses fishing string for the X and Y axis, and I think it's cool. I think it's really innovative, and I don't see any issue with it. Um, it is really smooth. I will say, though, uh, it is really high-end fishing line. Mine is a little bit um, worn just due to me kind of being dumb when I was setting this up and I was having issues, it kind of wore down some of the line, but so far it hasn't caused any issues and I do have tons of extra line if I do need to replace it. However, I have noticed that some people on his like little Google groups or Google forum for this printer um, have actually gone ahead and replaced the fishing string with um, your kind of more standard belt that you see on the different 3D printers, which is basically what my DaVinci and Fulgertech have. and. Now, I don't know, I and mean, I want to talk to Bob as to why he chose to use fishing string over that belt and whether there would be, in his mind, any pros, cons, or benefits of using one over the other because I'm looking at it and I'm not seeing any issues with the fishing string, again, other than the fact that it was a little bit more of a pain to initially set up. And, again, potentially I will have to replace it somewhere down the line, which shouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, but I'm kind of curious to see whether there is any um, real solid difference in terms of maybe quality or sound um, you know, like the, uh, basically the, um, decibel level of audio coming out of this thing when it's printing, which it is a pretty quiet printer in my, in all honesty, the, uh, Z axis is a little loud, but other than that, it is pretty quiet. So I'm gonna have to talk to him about that. And then last but not least, this is definitely one of those things that you'll probably see by the time the next video is up, I would think is I'm going to be adding similarly to what I did on the Fulger tech, a bracket with a fan that will be um, on if the printer is on and it'll basically be blowing cool air um, onto the uh, the boards, the ramps board and the Arduino or sucking hot air off. I don't know. I have to figure out how I have the other ones set up, but um, that's primarily it. I'm happy with the extruder. Um, I know that I can upgrade it down the line, but I haven't had any real need to at this point. Again, this is like primarily just a, it's a PLA printer at this point. Um, so yeah, I've got the a couple little upgrades like the uh, springs, which I will show you guys shortly here, the fan, which I will show you guys shortly here, and potentially the extruder fan, but that one might take more time, so it might be a little bit further down the line. Um, I've also got a pretty big print that I'm going to be starting on this in the next day or so here, so that'll be exciting. And um, hopefully very soon here I will actually have a review of this printer because I've had quite a few people that have asked about this and they want me to compare it to the Fulger Tech. And um, I've got a couple little face-offs going between three for different prints to see, you know, which one is the winner in terms of quality and stuff like that. So um, anyways, I hope you guys are all doing well and excited and hopefully you guys enjoyed this update. And um, if you've got any other suggestions for recommendations on upgrades or things of that nature or things you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed it doesn't cost a thing and if you'd like to support my channel furthermore i will place my patreon link in the description down below as always thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next video dope swanner and i am out peace guys